it's ironic, the counterfeit Canada is an idea I had for 20 years. And whenever I told anybody about it, they, and the idea I had was that there would be this robbery in Buenos Aires, safe deposit robbery, unbeknownst to the thieves, they've got these documents that show that Hitler escaped to Argentina. And that in the modern day time, his grandson is trying to become president. And that was the whole thing, that three generations later, his grandson was groomed by the Nazi money and was born in America. They created a big pharmaceutical company and suddenly these papers would prove his true identity. So it was a standalone. So much so was it a standalone that when the publisher read the read it, they rang up and said, look, People are going to love this so much, you've got to give a possibility of a sequel. And I said, there just isn't. I haven't got a sequel. And then friends of mine before publication read it. And um, Jeremy Clarkson read it. And Clarkson loved it. He just finished reading the second one, but he loved it. And um, he loved it so much, he rang me up and he said, and you can, you, people can check this on his Twitter because... He doesn't do that much on his Twitter, so you wouldn't have to go back that far. He said to me, Brian, are you by your laptop? And I said, I was. And he said, go on my Twitter. And he's got like 20 million followers. And he put a picture up of the cover and said, you've got to get this book. And that's when pre-orders went mad on Amazon. But the point is that I wrote the epilogue after people pressured me before it was published to leave a little glimmer of light for a sequel. But the epilogue didn't give a storyline, it just left a, a way to go if I wanted to go. So a book came out and again, so many reviews going, this is from the public, not a uh, journalist. So many reviews going, oh, I hope there's another one, I hope there's another one. Had no idea for another one or no intention. And then when I signed the movie deal, or the TV series deal, we were about a week away from signing, and they said, you are writing a sequel, Brian. I said, no, I'm not. And they said, we cannot get $45 million out of Netflix on a one-off that's got no possibility of a season two. You must understand that. No one's going to invest in a one-off. You might get a movie, but they weren't talking about a movie. They were talking about an eight-part series. So that was very galvanizing. And uh, I went away on a vacation with my wife, who was very helpful, big time. She was a journalist, she helped edit, you know, and is really a good voice in my ear. And we talked about how could we make a sequel that would have the characters at the heart of it, but have a different story. And that's when we came up, it was, I researched things and I was reading about Auschwitz and I read about something that triggered an idea for the book that would be credible with a pharmaceutical company in the current day. And then I thought, if I set it during COVID, then that's, you know, again, it gave another reason why these people could use COVID to cover some of the stuff they were doing with testing. And that's what happened. So I never had an intention. But here's the weird thing. When I wrote the second book, Furious Prophecy, as I got towards the end, I realized it's a trilogy in my mind, which I'd never dreamt of. And as we speak now, I am 80,000 words into the final book and we'll finish the first draft in about three weeks. And I'm really pleased with it. 